I sing of arms and of a man at war. We read Virgil's Aeneid in Tori, always have, always will. Um, when we are teaching Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, we have a great time and we're always dealing with incoming freshmen who read Homer and say, let's talk about predestination because I think fate and destiny are going on here. And we start our long four year slog of saying, <laughs> let's not talk about predestination and fate except in texts where it's an issue. Then we get to uh, Virgil's Aeneid and this man at war goes to found a city driven by destiny. Um, so I just want to ask that, is that an appropriate time to talk about destiny and fate? Is that a, a topic that Virgil's Aeneid introduces to us? Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> he does. It's all over the text. Um, can't help it. When uh, The whole um, set of, of books relating to Dido, mm. um, that's the struggle. He, he wants to stay. He's happy there. He loves it. Um, she obviously wants him to stay, but... The gods do not, right? So Mercury gets sent <laughs> to say, I don't know what you're thinking, but there's a larger plan here. And off we go, and the men jump to it with a will, and, and we go. So um, it's hugely... Uh, it, it, it shapes the text in significant ways. So, yes, it's there. Are you saying that in the, in the books revolving around um, Carthage and, and Dido, Aeneas has what, personal fulfillment and satisfaction there in that relationship and in that place with those people? And Th that's what it feels like. He's happy, it's, things are going well. So it's the, it's the gods that seem to want, they want Rome. Hmm. Um, so, so that's the thing they're intent on. So well, not all the gods, picture. but at least. Sure, <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Some of the gods right. want Rome and he has to, he has to submit to that. Um, but on the other hand, is it, is it something that, that Virgil is introducing, giving um, depth and contour to, the, to, to this notion of fate so that we can grapple with it, understand its parts, its, the relations that it has to other things, um, how the gods relate to it. Mm, I'm more inclined to think that it's just, it's just present, mm -hmm. but not something that he intends us to analyze so much as something that is just one of the components of the text which shapes what he really wants to communicate. Yeah, which is what I would argue is that it's a piece of propaganda. <laughs> right? The like, whole, why, the whole yeah, Aeneid yeah, yeah, period. Well, in one sense it really is, because it's like, why is Rome great? Mm -hmm. Why should you think that Rome is the place to be? Why should you think that we sort of have manifest destiny? Mm -hmm. We are to batter down the proud. We are to bring this Roman greatness, these ideals, these... Um, the, these great engineering feats, all of the things that they think mm -hmm. make Rome great. Our job is to make sure that those people that don't really understand us get this. So we are actually, what, heroes mm -hmm. in sort of this overcoming of, of, you know, Carthage and all of these places. Well, that's what we were supposed to do. What else would we do? Because we were fated to do this. So fate puts a big, a big picture behind it saying, hey, this is more than just chance. It's more than just, oh, well, a city just became awesome. We can't help it. Mm -hmm. No, the gods meant this. There's a, there's a big storyline behind it. Whether we're supposed to analyze that storyline in depth and particularly the role of fate, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to think not. Yeah, I, but I do think it's an argument like we're bringing democracy to the world kind of argument. <laughs> like we're, we are in, in one sense, right? We're, we're, we're really pushing uh, the place of us in, in the world at, at the time mm. that, it, that they're writing this. And the place of, of the best of um, broadly Greek history. So ta taking, taking, up, taking up Troy um, and, and then and redeeming it. This is part two. We're bringing all of all of that history, all that legacy into this, and it's it's fulfillment in kind of a second stage. So right, because so it's really it starts with losers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was about to say, why would you start your Rome is so great message by saying, you know who we are? The losers in the most famous story ever told. You've read the Iliad? That was us. We got burned down. And not only that, we were the ones that were dumb enough to let the Trojan horse in, right? In fact, we're the cowardly deserters from the burned down defeated city. How does that turn into the story of the awesomeness of Rome. So I wonder if fate there, um, again, sh shouldn't be analyzed, but it should, its role should be recognized. So, so did, did Troy succumb because it was the worst of the two cities? Mm -hmm. Not particularly. Right. Fate was again playing its role. Fate um, crushed that city and certain gods had their role in that. Mm -hmm. But um, those same incredibly honorable people, men, women, soldiers, then had a restored legacy in Rome. So again, fate seems to be more of a tool. It's, it's a fact we need to give, give uh, proper you know, recognition to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps explain why these aren't just the losers. Yeah. Um, the, 
Yeah. So that makes it, it's easy to think of um, Virgil versus Homer, sort of Homer speaking for the, mm -hmm. you know, the great Greek um, spirit and um, Virgil speaking for the Roman spirit. But this almost makes it sound like, you know that famous story that Homer told where Troy fell? Um, you might be wondering what the gods are up to and wondering if there's justice in that weird polytheistic pantheon. Well, Virgil could be saying, let me justify the ways of gods to man mm -hmm. and explain why the fall of Troy is actually justified. It brings about the greater good, which of course is Rome. Right, and actually in the middle of what looks like a defeat, like, okay, it's all over, it's actually not. And so a narrow perspective isn't sufficient to understand the broader scope of fate. Then, at the same time, he's picking up what's going on in Homer and just in recasting it. What was so, a somewhat uh, individual emphasis on Odysseus and home, and you can work on identity in a, in a fairly individualistic way, properly uh, focusing on the individual. Then Virgil twists it and takes it off in the direction of state, nation, way bigger scope. Right. So, so there's all sorts of fun in that dialogue where he's kind of changing the direction, same patterns, mm -hmm. sort of an irony and recapitulation, bumping up to a social level and uh, having all sorts well, of fun Well, so there's that. the famous mm -hmm. scene as they're leaving mm -hmm. Troy with Aeneas' father on his back and his holding the hand of his son and they're carrying the household gods. Right which is all indicative of, here's all of what we are, all of our culture, all of who we are, all walking out in one sort of, what, group right. to reform this thing. So it's a really important visual image, too, about mm -hmm. the nature of, of family and, of course, mm -hmm. the culture that sort of is all throughout Rome, which is where, like, paterfamilias, where the father is the head of the house, right. and, and all this structure rises up to Rome itself. With mm -hmm. the ghost of his wife recognizing, look, yes. you'll have another wife there, you're starting a new family, so there's this, there's continuity, there's change, there's kind of a uh, passing on of the torch or the baton. And, he, so. and I'm moving away from even the Greek mm -hmm. notion of things like rage. Like, he doesn't go back, even though he thinks about it, right. to fight the enemy because he's looking for his wife. His wife stops him and says, that's a bad idea. And it, right. it really does change. So, because if it was Achilles, right. Achilles just charges in and wreaks havoc, right? But mm -hmm. it's not Achilles, it's, it's, it's Aeneas. And it really does reframe the way in which uh, they're subservient to the gods. <laughs> the Tory Honors Institute at Biola University. Biblically centered, great books, liberal education. More at biola.edu slash Tory.